Hello everybody and welcome to the Model Railway Workshop and I'm going to be talking this time about how to make your own brick paper. It's not difficult. Um, first of all you have to download some images off the internet of some brick walls. Um, copyright, well these are um, copyright free. I forget what they call it now, uh, royalty free, that's it. Um, they've got some graffiti on there, look. that's strange. Um, anyway, you can uh, download these images. Um, I mean, what it means by royalty free is there's no copyright on them. Um, and you can upload them to the internet but in this case you're not going to be doing that you're going to be using them to build a model railway so once you've actually manipulated these images then they become yours uh, you've altered them in a way that the copyright has been um, dismissed if you like because it then becomes your image you've altered it to your own perspective and what you're looking for is uh, uniformity. So um, I'm going to have to sort of explain now uniformity. It means plain bricks. So that's no good because what you're going to try and do is shrink it down to such a size. You're going to put it in a document and you're going to copy this and paste it next to it which means you're going to get this brick in this image and it's going to spoil the whole sheet. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So you can download all sorts of stuff, stone walls and just type in to your browser, I don't know, brick walls, photos of brick walls, brick wall images, um, brick wall textures, there's a texture there. That's a really nice one. I like that one a lot. I've used that one. Um, brick paper, there's another brick texture there. It's uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, Queen Anne style brickwork. So you've got half bricks here all the way along and then whole bricks all the way along here. It's a different style of brickwork construction. Um, I forget what they call it, Queen Anne or something style as opposed to this one which is ordinary bricks overlapping each other. So you have to think about what style of bricks that you want as well. This is a crumbly old wall. And what you're going to do is bring up your copy of Microsoft Works. And this is Microsoft Word document. This is a very old computer program. And um, maybe you probably have a, a modern equivalent but this one does me and I'm looking to insert up here picture from file I've got my folder selected already oh a bit too far where is it try and find it that one I'll do this is a an example and you have a massive photo of a brick wall and they are well out of scale. So what do we do? We move the image to the corner and to keep it in perspective you can't just grab it like that and move it up otherwise you shrink the width of the bricks and that way as well it goes the other way. That's no good. You don't want that. So to keep the perspective oh, a bit too far there. Keep the perspective Where's the old brick? There it is. Bring it back up again and we'll move it up to there. So I want that in the right place. Along the top there, you can see, you have a ruler on these word processors, centimetres, which is really, really very handy for us modelers. The first thing I do is I shrink it down to a quarter of the size which is there 
in the middle and then I take a look at this brick here along the top and that is about one centimetre which is just a little bit too big because one centimetre is actually 18 inches and you don't have 18 inch bricks do you? So we'll shrink it down a bit smaller and have another look. And now that is, that brick there is around about half a centimetre. So that's okay. That's um, six millimetres which is around about in you know, O gauge six millimetres it's about um, 10 inches bricks are 8 inches 240 millimetre uh, so yeah that's perfectly acceptable it's a little bit oversized but if you want to shrink it a little bit you can do make it a bit smaller um, so now we have brick which is exactly where is it it's uh, about a third of a centimeter so that's acceptable and now you click on copy and paste and you drag it across and again and it takes a little while I'm pretty sure there are some word processor experts who are swearing what are you doing you just copied the whole lot now which I have done before but I can't remember how to do it now so sorry word processor experts I'm not an expert at word processing but I'm an expert at modeling and I'm pretty sure you can actually copy it all now and just copy the whole block all the way down, just copy all this block and copy it all the way down so you, you're reducing the amount of work. But what I mean by uniformity, as you can see here, there are some bricks missing out of the wall and here as well. And that's no good, we don't want that, do we? So you can pretty much do it in the same way. No, I don't want to save that. No, don't want to save that. Um, you can pretty much, where is it? That one. You can pretty much do it in the same way. Uh, another thing is, you need to have a picture like this, which has got lots of bricks on it. So the bigger the photograph of the brick wall, the better. Uh, piddly little things like this aren't really going to be a lot of good to you because you're going to be copying and pasting more. You're going to get things like this brick here, which is just the concrete filling in you're going to get bits of moss as well and you really really need to look hard for a proper photo of a brick wall um, so what you need to do is find that picture that you want and then you can go to paste and click on full page which tells you that is actually the size of an A4 sheet of paper so now you can take your real ruler and you can measure them to make sure you've done it properly. I did. And there we are, there's another one. That's quite a nice one, it's a bit too orangey really. You can change the colour if you want by using your editor. That's another one that I've done. As you can see, the block is quite small, but uh, anyway, it's uniform, like I said. Let's have a look at the full page. It doesn't look too bad, really. You can just about see there where it's staggered a little tiny bit. But uh, anyway, that's how you do it. That's how you make your brick walls. So let's go and have a look at the model itself. Right, uh, first of all, a little word about printers. I don't know whether you've got a bubble jet printer or a laser jet printer. The bubble jet is the liquid ink type and the laser jet is the powder on 
an electrostatic, an electrostatically charged drum, which uh, is better for me, really, because I can go away and leave the printer for two or three months, come back, and the ink, uh, the powder is still okay. It doesn't dry out like a bubble jet printer does. I had a bubble jet, tied two or three bubble jets in years gone by, and uh, I've printed out a couple of sheets, come back to it three months later, the ink is dried up, and it's cost me an absolute fortune to print out two pieces of paper. So I decided on a laser jet because it's better for me. And here we have the first sheet. Not far enough away. Yep. And as you can see, what I was saying about uniformity, you can see some stripes here. How you overcome that when you have a problem like that, I will show you in a moment. But it's a nice, nice texture. It's an old old wall and it's been painted white and it's uh, peeled off after time it's a nice brick paper and uh, here is an even nicer brick paper and as you can see the shadows under the bricks and uh, we'll have a close-up in a minute of the house that I've built and it's really really nice and uniform and it uh, didn't cost me a penny apart from the laser jet ink uh, powder um, it was really really cheap as chips I mean, when you have your printer you, know, you can print out all sorts of sheets with a laser jet and you can print out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of sheets of brick paper or whatever you want something else I've done what I've been doing here uh, so we have here a lot of different things that you can also print out with your laser jet which is as I say cheapest chips I have got here some more images I've downloaded off the internet it's fetch Fred and I've done it again with the Microsoft works as you can see Fred is about six foot tall and so are the lockers and you can cut them out and fold them on a piece of cardboard or whatever you want the crates um, cracker a box of crackers there you can fold up a box of tin seven uh, six six tins of coca-cola a pizza box or something um, box of cereal it's when you, you know when you when you actually fold it over the actual box of cereal is a jumbo box of cereal but you know it's all in perspective really also done a coca-cola machine which is when folded up it's as tall as Fred, so it's six foot, so that's perfectly acceptable. Washing machine there, that's all right. A cooker there, suitcase, newspapers, which you've seen in the previous video on the railway track, paper, plastic bags, again, some pizza boxes, and all sorts of stuff that you can download and print out with your laser printer. I'll say it doesn't cost anything at all. I've got some windows here which you'll see in a minute. The factory and I've also printed out some pieces of uh, wood as well. Some uh, sheets of plywood. And these are, in actual fact, I measured them to about uh, 8 foot by 4 foot sheets. And uh, I'm going to use those in a sort of a yard or a mill or something like that just sort of laying about on the layout and I think they'll look pretty good really next to a lorry or a van being loaded up you know maybe dem demolishing a house or something or yeah it's quite a nice idea so you can print out all sorts of stuff and print it out on your printer and oh yeah let's have a look at these as well these are pretty interesting Another one there, some nice big stuff there, plenty of stuff, sheets, boxes, 
banana boxes, that's it. Some more boxes there. You can fold these up, you can put them on platform and all that sort of stuff and lots of details. Lots of lots of details, really nice. Um I've got uh, over here I've got tons of stuff, absolutely tons. Hasn't cost me anything at all. We've got a carpet there. Uh, some privacy screens, some I did earlier with some stop signs for the railway, some more newspapers there, I've got some signs I've printed off, I've got some more signs I've got there to print off, and uh, oh dear, this list is endless. Anyway, I don't want to keep rabbiting on. Like an old woman. I want to actually show you now the building itself. So uh, I'll come back to that factory in a minute. Okay, so that is the brick paper applied to the row of terraces. Let me first of all show you a quick photo. Get ready to pause the video and take a look at its construction method. Here we go. And as you can see, the cardboard is really, really thick. In fact, about uh, eight millimeters thick. So it's double thickness cardboard. It's not your ordinary cardboard, thin cardboard, flimsy cardboard box. And in fact, inside the building itself, it is a, as you know, a, uh, a way of hiding the storage yards and as you can see it is really thick cardboard and uh, the construction method is really strong so it's not going to warp or bend or anything like that and it's really easy to put back in place and hide the storage yard um, and as you see in the photo you uh, you cut out your window shapes first and carve all these window sill um, slots out. It's really important that you do that, otherwise you're going to be cutting into your brick paper and cardboard and it's going to mess your brick paper up and also your lintels as well. And it's really important. I see so many models built and they put windows in and there's no lintels. You need lintels to support the brickwork like that, you see. And that stops the bricks from falling down and smashing your window. You need lintels above windows. In modern houses they don't use lintels, they use a piece of metal which goes all the way across and supports the bricks. So you don't actually see a lintel, you see a row of bricks um, modern construction methods, technology, progress. And uh, then your window sill is just a piece of balsa and it slots in just like that. Mm -hmm. It's nice. There we go. And I am actually making these windows. I'll come back to this in a minute and show you. Out of matchsticks on a piece of plastic. And now this plastic is plastic from the um, rubber blinds you can buy for your windows and it comes in a, a plastic container. You can actually see what I've been doing there using the roller blind packaging material to make my windows with. And uh, I use one of these tools to measure the oh, wrong way. I knew I was doing something wrong. To measure the windows, which are 36 millimeters wide and 34, 33 millimeters high, and uh, that's how I can get my accurate size of my window. If you don't, well you're going to have to use an ordinary ruler, it'll be much more difficult. 
and once you've glued your matchsticks all the way round I'll take a couple of slithers of balsa wood and just glue them across there like that and it uh, slot in place quite nicely. Just has to be exactly right just so that you can a little bit difficult to get in but it is nice and tight and you can put a spot of glue in from behind and as you can see that is a, a little bit more modern house than the one on the left and the type of glue that I use is where's the camera Loctite all-purpose adhesive for that job and there's the older house with the sash windows if it'll focus in no it's not going to focus in that's it sorry about that um, and uh, I put a little blind in that one look or as small details are concerned the actual door handle itself is its household dressmaker's pen and snipped in half well snipped around about five millimeters I would think um, and pushed into the balsa wood it's quite a reasonable size and obviously the house number is done in very much the same way as printing out the brick paper shrink it down to size and um, I've got a bit of a roller blind there for this house um, yeah, nice older type sash windows there put a some kind of electrical cable going up to the loft maybe they've got a or maybe a, some kind of gadget in the loft there or something just a bit of detail right a uh, little quick go on the roof there as you can see it's very nice it was hard work I can tell you anybody have uh, oh yeah um, so uh, see a round shape there this is out of a packet of nine Warburton's crumpets very nice as well those crumpets with cheese on top and it's really really thin card and it's perfect for making roof tiles and uh, I measure these out and I snip along like that and what I do is I glue a strip well I soak it in water first to make it nice and flimsy and easy to manipulate because you glue it on there and it it sticks up like that and you have to push it back down again if you put it with water it's nice and flimsy it will stick to the it'll stick to the uh, frame much easier and I glue it along like that and go along like that with that bit and then the next row I'll go all the way along again and I'll just overlap them slightly so that you get that sort of effect like that and as you can see it's done rather a nice job and it was bloody hard work and all I'll tell you but it is definitely worth it now I haven't painted it black as you might think I've actually painted it dark grey but it's had about seven or eight coats I started off with some emulsion house emulsion grey light grey and I went over it with poster paint mainly because the PVA glue that I painted over it to seal it all in wouldn't accept the poster paint because poster paint is water based I know emulsion paint is water based but it's a completely different chemical structure than poster paint and the poster paint wouldn't stick so I primed it with light grey primer and then I went over it with several different shades of poster paint making it darker and darker as I went and it ended up being streaky um, got some uh, green poster paint I mixed with some other colours yellow and red and all that sort of stuff and made it a nice green streaky colour and whilst the poster paint was wet I streaked it in 
off the sides of the chimneys as you can see maybe I don't know whether you can see that in the video but uh, it's come to a nice effect there have a look along there there we are that's a much better view see how it's all nice and streaky just keep stroking the brush down and you'll get it a nice nice effect it's semi shiny it's uh, semi matte because slate roofs are semi matte and they do have green streaks down them but moss doesn't grow on slate roofs it'll grow on modern roofs because it's got something rough to stick to and believe me I know there's loads of moss on my roof okay so that is that set of buildings oh, apart from the soffit now that is just a piece of square balsa wood I would recommend anyone buy a massive pack multi-pack of balsa wood I've got all sorts of different sizes of balsa I've got really thin sheets like that I've got loads and loads multi-pack balsa pack is what you want uh, I've got enough balsa to keep me going for 20 years so you know I recommend you buy a massive pack of balsa wood to do, do all this with it's really handy stuff and of course all the rest is cardboard and brick paper you can do yourself this is you can do yourself with this leftover material from food and again the where's the chimney pots are there the chimney pots are big squares of balsa um, you can make yourself the pots themselves are drinking straws uh, got to finish them off go around there uh, nice and easy um, let's have another look at this building which I said earlier have a little bit of a look in there I want to tell you about the guttering as well I just want to lift the thing up a little bit so, sorry about the movement but it is really important that you see this bit of a detail here right now you see that there now let's go over here and have a look at this one that's better i don't know how this will come out in the video but these drinking straws that you can buy these bendy next drinking straws are really really useful because you can do stuff like that with it and bend it around like that and uh what I did at the top there is I flattened the drinking straw with the ruler and, and used the ruler to cut the drinking straw in half and then what I've done is I've taken some pieces of wire and bent them into a cup shape and pushed them into the side so that I've got something to glue the guttering into and then I've just painted it dark grey and uh, it looks really nice Uh, right, so I want to tell you now about another material that I found. I have to come all the way out for this and come back down again to earth. Hopefully not with a bump. Or a bump, as they say, an aloe aloe. Uh, so this is packaging material from apple turnovers so you have four triangle apple turnovers in here and that uh, packaging cardboard comes in really really handy for corrugated tin corrugated asbestos or modern corrugate if you want so call it that and it is with a ruler the actual perforations measure let's just get that across oh, lift the ruler up that's it uh, say about four inches that is a scale ruler the model makers scale rule 
seven millimeter to the foot so as you can see that is around about four inches so they are four inch four inches those corrugates which is about to scale there's the windows I printed out look balsa wood frame and sills and I've layered the corrugates first on top of the brick and then I put another layer on top so they overlap uh, da -da. Um, did the same with the roof as well started at the bottom and worked my way up and I thought, well, you know, I'm not going to go to all the trouble of sticking on individual 8 by 4 sheets. What I'm going to do is have a go at painting them individually. And I, that's what I did. All of these as well, they're all painted individually. Wait for one to dry, go on to the next one. I've got three different colours, as you can see here. And it makes it look a little bit you know like there's separate panels all the way along and also on the roof three different colour greys um, and it was all dry I just dribbled a little bit of green and black here and there and uh, made a nice job obviously these signs as well are done in very much the same way and there you go that, uh, that's about it really Got some uh, string here as well. Uses painted black and uses electrical cable up to some kind of junction box. And right, uh, let's have another little look down here before the camera runs out of power. This is uh, quite a long video. Sorry to say. Uh, I want all the bits over here. Right, there, like that. So, where's all the other stuff? There it is. As you've already seen, balsa wood sill, lintel, and you've seen the window. These are the slithers of balsa to go into there, and I'm using matchsticks. That's it. And that is how to make your own model buildings. Very, very interesting. Uh, so, uh, just one more thing. Um, not everybody has a lot of time to do this sort of thing. Maybe they have kids or something like that. Um, they want to get it done quick and they buy an oval of track, put some grass mat in the middle, buy some plastic houses, plonk them in the middle of the oval, and that's it, they say, I've built a model railway. Unfortunately, it's not as simple as that. It's a quick solution for people with kiddies. It's fun, um, but it's not real railway modelling. This is real railway modelling. Buying the track, cutting it up, to the right size, nailing it down, overcoming the problems of electrical power supply with the points, wiring the points up properly, building your locomotive kits, building your wagon kits, building your coach kits and building houses from kits or uh, from scratch. You know, that as far as I'm concerned is real railway modelling and it is much more enjoyable than buying it out of the shop and costing it a fortune. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's been of some help and uh, cheerio for now. Bye bye.